To get to the Backwoods homestead, where he started his family four decades ago, Dwayne Hansen snowmobiles miles in from Jackman's Spencer Road. It's about 16 miles from the Canadian border in deep timber territory. Oh yeah, these are links. I saw these when they were fresh a couple of days ago. It's crisscrossed by moose and deer tracks, lynx, bobcat, eagles patrol from above. But right here, in a stretch of trail that runs between Hansen's 60-acre parcel and his son's 100 acres, Central Maine Power owns the land. Going from here, 50-whatever miles all the way to the Canadian border. Hansen's put signs all along the 53-mile stretch from the border to Caratunk, where CMP hopes to cut down a 150-foot-wide swath of trees to accommodate high-voltage transmission lines. With towers as tall as 100 feet, the power line would carry hydroelectricity from Quebec into New England to serve customers in Massachusetts. So it would be coming from that direction and it would cross and cross that road that we come in. Once in the warmth of his wood-heated, solar-powered house, Hansen says the power line is an existential threat to the off-the-grid life he and his wife Sally Kwan love. We have a root cellar. We grow our own food and and then we just hunt and fish for meat. The power line thing, that's going to affect all the animals and the fish and all big time. That's what I consider the worst part of it, is it's just going to destroy this whole area. The mountains have been targeted because there's nobody here to fight it. Hansen can get emotional about it. I just kind of, it just really upset me. Just sometimes I feel very angry, and then other times I just feel very sad because of what's happening and what could very well happen. The CMP project is dividing communities from Jackman to Caratunk, 13 miles south of Dwayne Hansen's home in West Forks, near the confluence of the dead in Kennebec Rivers. Inn owner and businessman Joe Christopher is a strong supporter of the project, and he's caught some grief for that. It has been not fun, that's for sure. Uh, emotional, uh, cantankerous, difficult. Um, a lot of these people are lifelong friends. I respect them. I respect their views. Uh, it's been very, very difficult for myself, my family, my staff. Early on, he joined a group of rafting companies and other outdoor enterprises in support after CMP offered them millions of dollars in benefits, such as economic development funds, conservation easements, and more. You know, this is largely industrial forest. It's something that I've never liked about the area. I felt like it was a stable use of the land that they already owned, and I'm also the type of person that, you know, the, the, they own the land, so they do have some rights in that. I think if we flood the northeast region of the United States with renewable energy, the industrial rate of electricity will come down. We'll be able to take more advantage of those types of technologies, such as electric cars and otherwise. Uh, to me, that is the biggest global benefit and local economic development engine for the state of Maine. Just a few miles downstream from the end by the river, though, another former rafting guide, Elizabeth Caruso, says the area's rough beauty shouldn't be sacrificed just so Massachusetts can satisfy its thirst for energy. People here, we live very simply. We just, we live pretty humble lives. We work hard. We're here because, not because it's convenient, not because there's stores next door, not because we're making a lot of money, but because we love the beauty of our surroundings. Caruso chairs the town select board, and she's been a fierce critic of the project in hearings before state regulators. The money that's being thrown out there, it looks pretty, it, it's, but it's kind of a facade. How is that mitigating for raping our natural resources, for polluting our trout streams, for permanently devastating our main woods, and really hurting and, you know, destabilizing the tourism economy that we have here in Somerset County. Opposition is pretty easy to find along the stretch of the power corridor that would require new forest clear cuts. But south of Caratunk, where the power line would run alongside another that's already in place for some 90 miles, it's a different story. 
some of the houses that are there that are near the corridor are used to looking at these power lines. Many of them built next to the corridor. Shiloh Lafreniere is town manager in Jay, which has struggled with job losses at the local paper mill. We've got Verso paper that's right across the river. We've been very fortunate to have them in our community. And about three or four years ago, the paper industry started to decline. So that's had a huge impact. I think in the last six years, maybe, our tax rate has gone up like 45 percent. Jay tends to be very pro-business. Our, our selectmen tend to be that way anyways. But when looking at we can add to our tax base, it won't necessarily just be our one taxpayer verso paper. To be able to try to diversify some of that was obviously appealing. Ultimately, the Canada-made electricity would end up at a substation in Lewiston, where it would flow into New England's electricity grid. Lewiston's economic development director, Lincoln Jeffers, has been a vocal supporter. Lewiston it actually has a relatively high tax rate, so this will really help right that ship. I, mean, I used to be a river guide, but the irony is that the rafting industry would not exist in Maine but for a dam that holds that water back and is released throughout the season. This is working for us. This is not virgin, untouched territory. This is a working forest. Uh, so uh, I, I'm somewhat surprised at the, uh, at the opposition. To really understand the opposition, you might consider the view from the top of Coburn Mountain, near to the forks. You're at 3,718 feet on Coburn Mountain. This is all owned by the Department of Conservation. And you can pretty well see that entire power line from here. Pete Dosty, another area inn owner, cut this snowmobile trail up the mountain decades ago. Pretty well everything you see here, um, there's, there's no hard commercial sprawl on it. It's, um, it's the last of what we have. It's why people come three and four and five hundred miles away to, to be here, is because you don't see any factories, you don't see any power lines, you don't see all the stuff that you would down in New Hampshire or Massachusetts. And that's why they come here. And if these, these poles go in, it's definitely going to affect not only our economy, but a way of life.